Uh, I don't think your mic's working, Professor, if you're saying stuff right now. Test, test, check. There we go. That's perfect. Test, test, check. Can that's you hear perfect. that still? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm just going to talk about assignment seven real quickly. Um, uh, I'll just start with the delete back here. So, um, because you have to do delete front and delete back, delete back is a little bit more complicated since it's a singly linked list. So the complication is, is that um, you have a pointer to the back node using the ls class here. So, so back should always be pointing to the back node, but you need to repoint back to be pointing to the one before that. And you really don't have a pointer to that on a single link list. So assuming that the list wasn't size one, so it becomes empty, you actually do have to iterate through this. So delete back actually becomes a big O of N. So, so you know, however many nodes there are currently in the list, you actually have to iterate over them. So the 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 strategy is for most of these, um, if you if you thought a little bit about how linked lists work here, Usually for a singly linked list, the best strategy is to get your point, get a pointer pointing to the one before the node that you need to manipulate. 
So yeah, for the delete back, what we need to do is, is we have to iterate um, and, and we want to, so we have to start off at the front node and we want to keep going until this, this temporary node that I called prev here is, is, is the one before the back node. Okay, so that's what this little while loop does. Um, so while the, the, the previous node while what it's pointing to is not the back node, we, we just keep uh, moving it along. So this will jump us out as long as soon as previous is, is the node before uh, the current back node. And once you have a pointer to the previous node, then you're good. Because uh, you, you can delete the current back node um, uh, and, and set the, the, the node that's before the current back node, then it's next is the null pointer. So the, the back, the last node in, a linked list should always be pointing to null, um, uh, and then just set back to the new, uh, to that what's the new back now, the, the node that was previous uh, to the back initially. Uh, um, all right, but the, the more complex uh, uh, were, were, were the last two tasks, so the delete index and then the delete value. Um, so we have an example of that, although, you know, delete index is, is not too much uh, more dif different than, uh, it's actually probably simpler than delete back. Um, um, although, yeah, if you followed kind of the um, suggested algorithm, you could do something like this. So make some special cases out of if you're deleting the first value in the list or the last value. So if you're asked to delete uh, index zero, that's actually the, the front item so we could reuse the delete front method if that's using. And if you're asked if, if size is whatever size is, and if you're asked to delete uh, one minus that, that's that's the last valid index since we're using zero-based indexing, so you can reuse the delete back. So, um, I probably could have dropped this. Um, so in fact, I have to think about it here, but most likely uh, this is kind of unnecessary because delete delete back is, you know, iterating through to find the previous node, but that's pretty much the same thing that we have to do here. Uh, although we have to iterate to find, uh, we want to, in this case, we want to find, have pre be set to the node before the node that we want to delete, right? Uh, but yeah, in this case, we're going to iterate till we get to a particular index instead of uh, iterating till we get to the last, to the one before the last node. So. Um, so in this example, um, implementation prev, once you get past this loop here, should be pointing to the node previous to the one that needs to be deleted according, according to the index, the, the ID that we're given of, of the node we want to delete. So assuming that while loop is working, then you have to do something similar to what we did for the, the delete front. Um, uh, to be good managers of memory, we want to keep track of the node that we're actually going to be deleting. Then we have to re manipulate our linked list so that um, uh, we kind of cut out uh, that node, right? So, so the 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 previous to the node that we're trying to delete, we want to skip it over so that it's pointing to what that node to delete's next value is, right? So that essentially skips over the node that we're trying to delete here by manipulating um, our pointer to know. Once we've successfully cut it out, then we're safe to just call delete on it um, to to free it back up, give it return back to the heap there. So I don't know if I mentioned this in the lecture videos. For me, if you have, if uh, you know, if if uh, anybody watching this, uh, if you had problems kind of thinking about this, um, you know, doing this, it really helps me to um, draw these out on paper or on a whiteboard. Um, you know, when, when you think about manipulating nodes in a linked list like this. Um, so, um, and then, like I said, I kind of want to do this relatively quickly here. So the delete value. Um, was the trickiest, although um, at this point, I think I got almost everybody that's that's still uh, submitting assignments, uh, six, at least six or seven uh, people also got a working delete value. Um, so, 
this was tricky because uh, you were required to find all, you know, so, so it's possible that there was uh, duplicates of a particular value in this list. So we're not, this isn't a set. This is a list of values. So, so we could have things that actually had, uh, duplicate items, du duplicate values in it. Um, and we wanted to delete everything with that same value. So not just assume there's only one of a particular value or, or only delete the first one that we find. Um, So if you follow the suggested algorithm, um, um, you could handle special cases to use the delete front to keep deleting things as long as the front value um, is the, the one that we're trying to delete. So that's what we're doing. And you could have done the same thing with this, the also removing uh, the last value as well. So. Although here, like I had, as some people found out, you do have to be careful that as long while you're doing this, it could be the case that the list becomes um, empty. So, so at some point, uh, the, the problem is, is that if, if list becomes empty, then the front pointer will be pointing to null. So then if you try to dereference the null pointer, you'll get a, a runtime crash, right? So um, this is kind of a good... Um, example of how the sort of short circuiting using a Boolean and works, right? So if it's not true, so, so if it's true that uh, um, uh, front is equal to the null pointer, it won't do the second part of this. So it won't do the runtime crash. And now that I look at that, you probably need the same thing. So if you had um, an explicit while loop in order to remove the back values, uh, that were equal to the value that you were supposed to delete. Um, you probably need to do the same thing because it, um, well, um, oh, that's not true. Yeah, so the reason why I didn't have it in here is, is once you get past this, you're guaranteed that the, the list isn't empty and that the front node uh, isn't the value, right? So the only way that you could end up emptying out the list was if all the values in, in the list um, when you started this were the value you were asked to delete, right? So, so it could become empty um, at that point, and we're ch checking that here. Um, I guess it, it wouldn't hurt, but but um, it's probably unnecessary to check because if you if you get past this point and there's still values in the list, um, um, so I have to think about it. Well, um, yeah, so I'm probably wrong. Um, the things I'm saying about that. So, so, so you may need to check this. And, and I think most people did that were explicitly also uh, looping through the, uh, the um, using the delete back to remove any values at the end of the list. So, um, so yeah, it is possible that the list became empty at, at which point back would have been null. So, so yeah, if you weren't checking that, I guess um, you could have also caused a runtime exception here. So you probably do have to check in both places. I commented this out because um, kind of like I was talking about before, um, the, the way I implemented the general case here, um, it turns out not to be necessary uh, because this loop will correctly um, delete values at, at the, the back that are equal to the value that we're trying to remove here. So, um, but like I showed here, um, some people used um, checking that uh, the size was three or bigger, um, which um, is true. So, so if you actually get past uh, this point here, uh, there's at least two values. There, there's like a if you had an explicit thing removing the the the. Um, uh, the values from the back of the list. Uh, actually, there's at least three because you have to get past both of these and the list isn't empty. There had to be at least the front node that wasn't the value and a back node that wasn't the value. Um, and um, and there had to be some node in between those. So, so yeah, if you get this point, either the list is empty or there's just three or more values here. Uh, But anyway, um, yeah, just to wrap this up. So uh, inside of here, uh, we do, in this example solution, we do something similar to what um, I was talking about before. So we, we want to keep, uh, we need to iterate through the values. We want to start off pre-pointing to the front. So we know at this point, 
if you did a loop like this, that the, the, the value in the front node can't be a, a value that we're trying to delete. So, so it's safe to ignore the front node at this point. Um, and and uh, um, um, so we want prev to be positioned uh, before the node that we're actually testing whether it's the value or not. Um, so I'm, I'm, in this example solution, I'm using two temporary pointers, a previous and a current. Um, so whatever previous is pointing to, we want current to be pointing to the value uh, to, to the node after that. So we always set current to be prev next. So at this point in this loop, prev points to a node before current and, and current points to the node that we're testing whether it needs to be deleted or not from the list here. So then there's basically two conditions. So either we need to delete current. So if current values is the value that we want to delete, we perform this, um, basically doing something similar to what we showed before. So we cut out current out of the linked list. So, so set pre's next to current's next. Um, and we've got a pointer to current, so we just delete current and reduce the size by one anytime we do that. Um, and here I kind of, uh, um, yeah, if you didn't do this explicitly, um, it is possible that we're deleting the back node now. So, so it shouldn't be possible that you're deleting the back node um, if you had like an explicit while loop. So you wouldn't have to do this. But I, but I kind of moved that here in this example solution that uh, if, if current happens to be the back node, we're actually deleting the back node out of there. So we need to set the, the back pointer uh, to the, our new back, you know, if that was the case. So. Otherwise, yeah, if, if the node doesn't have the value, we just need to keep kind of moving along. So um, lots of ways you could have done that, but um, I just set prev to move it to the next one and then and then at the top of the loop here is where I repoint current to be the one after prev uh, to do our checks here. So. Um, all right, uh, any quick questions on the previous assignment? Because like I said, I kind of want to move on, but uh, if anybody, um, or if you want to ask about that, let me know. Um, anyway, so that's posted up there uh, if you want to compare to your own approach. Um, all right, so let's talk about assignment seven. So for assignment seven, uh, we're going to be actually using stacks to implement some things. So as usual, I haven't, uh, haven't accepted the assignment yet, so I'll go through the steps um, here to um, Clone our repository uh, to accept the assignment. Clone the repository to accept it first here. So accepted the assignment so that we create our repository. We'll go and clone it. So we have a local copy of our repository. Um, So as usual, you know, you should check your builds. I think I finally had, had one or two people that were still having problems with the um, uh, auto formatter and stuff. But um, uh, I think I think maybe we finally got everybody with that set up. So, um, I mean, as usual, you should be able to, let's say, open up test stack functions. And, uh, oh, uh, I forgot the configure steps. We need to open up a terminal so we can first configure everything. Um, and then we should, uh, once we've done that, we should be able to do our build normally. So do clean, do make all. Uh, 
uh, mayor tests. So there are some tests uncommented. Uh, there, you're you're not actually um, um, you're not going to be implementing any of the stack member methods this time. We're going to be using uh, stacks that you're given to implement some functions with stacks on this assignment. So we'll talk about that. Uh, but and like I was saying though. Um, I guess you know everybody should get in the habit since or if you've been if you've been having problems, you know, make certain that your IntelliSense is working and the format is working. So uh, if you type in some code, uh, for C++ IntelliSense is set up, um, it should, you know, be parsing the code as you type things in. Um, and and you'll get uh, It'll detect problems. And the other thing is it should on save. So if I do a save control S, it should be running the code style formatter and, and should get the code re-indented and stuff like that. So if you don't see those two things happening, um, you might have some issues here. So uh, anyway, um, I guess we can create our task one then. Task one issue. and associate it with our pull request. All right, now we should be ready to go. So, um, so yeah, so from the last assignment, Maybe people should now be a little bit kind of familiar with the structure here. So there's lots of classes in here, uh, but there's basically a, a stack base class which defines our stack API. So you know it defines like the push and the pop. Let's go, we'll go look at that. And there's two implementations. There's an array based stack and a linked list based stack again, just like we had for our regular list before. Um, but you're mostly, I think, all of them. Um, oh no, I'm wrong. So yeah, our first task I did leave out. So we're going to go back and implement some member functions for the uh, linked list based stack. So the L stack, uh, the push and pop method here um, before, and then task two, three, and four are to actually use the stack um, to do some things. Uh, so there's five tasks here. Um, we'll, we'll be using our stack classes. So, um, so. As in the previous assignment, let's look at the um, stack.hpp. There's a abstract base class defined called stack that uh, defines API um, and it has commented out the ones you have to implement here, the push and the pop. Um, and there's actually an already working implementation of an array based stack. Um, so the array based stack uses a um, allocated array of type T's and, and our classes are templatized. Uh, um, um, so the array based one uses uh, um, a dynamically allocated and managed array of T's uh, that we push and pop values onto. We put things in or out of the array of values um, to uh, simulate our stack. Uh, and likewise, the L stack then um, just like last time, in fact, the push and pop method are going to be pretty similar. Actually, they're they're basically the same as the um, um, insert on the back and insert on the uh, uh, no. So, so the stack is, is to step back a little bit. Um, a stack is a uh, um, um, uh, a first in, last out um, data structure. So the 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 first thing that we push in is going to keep having stuff pushed up on top of it. So the, the last thing that we push on would be the first out. That's another way of saying it, last in, first out for a stack here. So, um, you know, for the uh, array uh, based implementation, let's, let's just look at it quickly, I like the push and the pop for our array based implementations. Um,
So, you know, since we're just using an array, the, the easiest thing for the array, assuming that we've still got, you know, some space, um, we don't have to grow it, but um, 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 so we, we've, our current size of the stack is smaller than the allocation size. We're always just going to use the end of the array um, as the top of our stack, basically, right? So whatever the current size is of the array that we're using to maintain our stack for the uh, array-based one, uh, the valid indexes are from zero to size minus one. So if I need to push a new value onto a stack, I just push it uh, whatever size is and increment size by one. So it's not pointing to the next one, um, growing as needed, right? Why, and, and notice both of these are, uh, this is a, a constant time operation, assuming that we don't have, so it's constant time, except whenever the stack is currently full, at which point we have to allocate a new array and copy thing over. So it becomes uh, O of N. Uh, uh, for the times when it's full, but otherwise it's a constant time to push a new value onto the end of our array base stack here. Likewise with pop, assuming that we're not trying to pop off of a stack that's empty, um, it's, re it's relatively simple. So, you know, um, we can just decrease the size of the array by one, uh, which effectively means that we forget about the value at the end. Um, and the top of our stack now is the one that was below it uh, before. So that, that's kind of the basic way the push and the pop works on the array. And this basically is the same as the um, uh, insert back and delete back uh, that we had for our linked list. Uh, and in fact, another implementation way that we could implement uh, a stack would be really to just um, have used the, the list class uh, and um, um, to find a stack to use the uh, A list from before. Um, and just have pop call uh, delete back. So, but we're, we're just basically kind of re-implementing them here. So for the um, linked list based version, um, you do have to implement um, the push and the pop for task one. So, um, oh, and so the, the first test cases are actually going to be in the um, test L stack. So, so, so task one is to, to actually implement the push and the pop. <laughs> so you'll first be uncommenting um, the, the one and only test case. So there might be two separate test cases here. Um, Um, so yeah, the first one is testing testing uh, uh, an L stack of, of integers. Um, the other one tests an L stack of strings. You shouldn't uncomment both of those, but we can get started by just uncommenting the first one. Um, and um, we want to implement the push and the pop. Um, to get this to compile, we're going to have to actually declare both of these together. Uh, I probably should have separated this so you could have done this one at a time. But, but yeah, we got both push and pop uh, in here. So, so we'll need to declare both of those um, uh, to get this compiled again. So once we've uncommented that, um, as usual, if you try it out, you should see that um, um, it will complain. And if your IntelliSense is working, um, it will detect that there's no, you know, you'll get the, the squiggles trying to call the push methods here because there is no member method um, implemented or even declared yet. So um, you should uncomment these two. So, so we, you know, again, these are the um, declaration of the API for the push and the pop for, for any concrete um, child class of our stack it needs to implement a push method that takes some constant reference to some value um, and a pop method that basically doesn't do anything, doesn't, doesn't return anything, doesn't take anything as input. So. Um, kind of like I showed before, um, our signature for the push and the pop is the same. So, you know, I could, I could just copy the signature from a stack um, and put that over to our um, um, lstack.hpp to implement these here. So let's see here, after clear, put those in, right? Um, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, that should be enough to actually um, allow the, the test 
to compile okay since we've now declared what the signature looks like for these member functions. So let's try that. Make sure everything's working. So given that we've gotten that, um, it's actually able to compile everything, but we just have link errors now um, because we haven't actually made an implementation for the push and the pop. Um, so. um, So like before, I'm uh, to 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 get a bit of a start on the push and the pop. I'll go ahead and just copy the implementations from the array based um, stack here. So I'll find a push and pop because um, we're basically have exactly the same. Just the implementation is going to be different. Um, and yeah, we'll check the documentation, make certain that you know, modify any things on the documentation. Um, so we'll get our push in the pop over to our L stack after our clear method. So this gets us 90% of the way there, you know, so the big difference being that uh, we're now implementing these in our L stacks. Um, and um, I mean, the, the size should increase. Um, and this is a void method, so I don't really have to do anything, but um, uh, the size will uh, increase for our linked list based version, uh, but we'll have, we'll have to do the uh, other things that we did before. So, um, oh, and, and um, um, like we did for the array base that uh, we we will have the requirement that if it's empty and you're trying to pop off an empty stack for the linked list base we should uh, detect that um and um throw an exception method message um and the size will decrease by one so we'll need both of those okay with those i mean those are perfectly fine stubs now so that should allow us to compile and run and in fact um, um we're actually implementing a little bit so um, let's try that. So this time when we recompile, um, it should link cleanly. And when we run our test, it'll be running the tests uh, that we uncommented, but we'll have some failing now, so. Uh, oh, um, uh, yeah, we're actually getting a segmentation violation um, because uh, da, da, da. probably because um, I increased the size by one. Um, let's look at the tests here. I, I, I'll just tell you why you're getting that. Um, uh, just thinking about it here, but. Um, um, so it probably works fine uh, for the empty stack, but after we push, we increase the size by one, but uh, for the linked list based one, now the size is one, the front and the back should, should no longer be null. Uh, but uh, if we call a method uh, like top or something, um, uh, uh, so I probably shouldn't have, uh, if we wanted to avoid that crash, I probably shouldn't have um, um, been changing the size here so quickly uh, that that's probably what's causing the crash because some parts after I did that think that the list is no longer empty but for the linked list version front and back are still null pointers um, so other parts uh, that see that the list shouldn't be empty try to access front or back and, and uh, ends up throwing an exception there so um, Let's see if we uh, if we don't increase the size if that keeps us from having the run runtime crash. Oops, it's a little bit too quick there. I wasn't quite done compiling when I tried to run the test. Um, there we go. All right, that looks a little bit better. So that's pride the stub that you want to do. So instead of crashing, we're just 
Uh, we're actually running the test, but uh, failing as we would expect. And our first one failing um, is at line 56 here. So after we push five, the size should be one um, and so on. Right? All right. So I'm not going to give you these. And I mean, actually, we kind of already did give you these, like, like I already mentioned, for the linked list version of push. Um, we're going to, for the linked list version, you want to use the back of the list um, to be the, the top of your stack because that'll all that'll give you the, the constant time uh, implementations for the push and the pop, which are the only operations that you need for the stack, right? Since, since we've got a pointer to the back, I don't know. Um, 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 no, I'm wrong. Okay, so let me take that back. So uh, let, let's look at the, the stack a little bit closer. There is, there is a difference. Um, there isn't a front and a back for the list. So actually, there's a single pointer, top node, which is initially null for the linked list version. Um, and yeah, so, so actually, we want to push to the what we were calling the front of the linked list for the stack, because if we use a singly linked, uh, singly linked linked list here, um, we always have this pointer to what we're calling the top node now, so the front. But this allows us to do a constant time implementation of the only operations we need for the stack, the push and the pop. Because if, if we push, we can just push it to the become the new top node. So we want to create a new node uh, for push and point it to the old top node to become the new top node. And for a pop, we just want to delete, you know, the 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 node that's currently the top node, uh, repoint top node to the the one um, after that, and call delete on that old top node, right? But yeah, essentially these are the same as the insert front and delete front that we just did for the previous assignment, right? Uh, except yeah, we we changed the name of that. We don't have a back anymore. We've only got um, top node instead of front. Um, so if, if you follow that, so that means that, you know, our implementation of push is uh, we want to create a new node. Um, so like we say here, create a new node dynamically, uh, and like you did before for the uh, insert front and insert back, initialize the value to the, the value given to the push function, initialize the next pointer to be null pointer. Um, and then, so if the stack is empty, using the is empty, that means that the top node just needs to be pointed to that new node. Um, and that's when you're done at that point. And if the stack isn't empty, um, you need to point, um, um, that you need to point your new nodes next to be the current top node and then repoint top node to that new node that you created. Um, and then, and then, yeah, you do also have to increase the the size of the stack by one. Um, and then for pop, you know, we already gave you that. You should should check and test if it's uh, empty and throw an exception. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, you'll need you want to be there's a requirement that you correctly del call delete on that top node that we're popping off um, the top of our stack here. So make a temporary node, point it to the current top node, repoint top node to the, the, the next node in the linked list. That becomes the new top of the stack. Uh, and then delete that old top node that you have the temporary pointer pointing to and, and decrease size by one. All right. Um, all right. So that gives you uh, push and pop, basically. Um, all right, and then the 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 like I said, the the next three um, next uh, four tasks are a little bit different. Um, um, so we're going to go back. We're not going to be implementing member methods anymore of our stack class. Uh, we're going to actually be using stacks to implement these little games or these little algorithms here, right? Um, so, so these are examples of using stacks to do things, right? So, so the, the first one um, 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 is, 
relatively easy to understand, I hope, for most people. So we're going to implement a parentheses matcher that, that will look at a um, expression, an expression of, of open and closed uh, parens um, and return a, a Boolean result. So return true uh, if the expression is matched, return false if the expression is not matched, all right? Um, so for the task two and the rest of them, um, you're gonna be doing the things in the test stack functions. So this is, that's where you'll find test case for task two and three and four and five. Um, so, you know, here's some examples of, of what that, so you, we're actually going to be passing in a string um, uh, to this function called do parentheses match. Uh, and I'll probably get, I think I'll go ahead and give you guys the signatures for these, although I talk about these, maybe for all of these um, uh, here. Uh, but yeah, so uh, by default, we should consider an empty expression with no parentheses to be matched. Uh, but these are all examples of matching, right? So, you know, if you have just an open followed by close, those match. Uh, open, then we close it off. Open, we close it off. You know, that match. So we got some nested ones here, two opens, then we close the two off and so on, right? So these are all matched. Um, and then, you know, our most basic unmatched examples are an opening with no close or a close with no opening. Um, and then other more complex examples of that. So, um, so these are going to be regular functions, not member functions of a stack or anything. So, so these should be going into the, the file called stackfunctions.hpp and cpp, respectively. Um, So, um, I mean, you know, your basic expression for this first one is something like that. It, it takes a, you know, we're going to use um, um, these new C++ strings, objects um, as input. So it takes a string as input um, and returns a Boolean result. This can probably be a constant string. I don't know if I specified that. Um, I mean, in this case, you know, you shouldn't be changing that string. So you should be able to pass in as a constant reference parameter, um, which is the normal kind of thing you want to do for objects that might be complex that you're not going to be changing inside of the function um, that does stuff with them. Passing in by constant to guarantee that I don't actually change that value when I return and, and pass it in by reference in case it's kind of big uh, for performance reasons. So. Um, and then your implementations for these should go into the corresponding stack functions that um, CPP file. You know, um, don't leave documentation as an afterthought. So. Um, So here we're basically testing if the um, string expression, which should only consist of open parentheses and closed parentheses. Uh, is a balanced or mass expression. So the expression is a string of uh, parentheses like, like that. Turns true if the parentheses balanced, false if not. All right. Um, 
Now, for all these, um, so that that'd actually be enough for the uh, for a stub function here. So uh, I guess we can try that out. So you know, since I uncommented the um, 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 test case for those, and I just added in the uh, declaration and uh, a stub function, we should be able to compile and run the test two tasks now. Try it out. So, um, so yeah, they, they compile and run fine. Um, and, you know, as expected, you know, since we're all returning true, we're just failing on all the unmatched. We're expecting false to come uh, back as the result uh, here. So, um, okay, so there is uh, uh, some pseudocode here. Um, so this is how we basically uh, use a, a stack here. Um, so, um, um, we're going to loop through each character uh, in that string expression. So you can do that like this. So, so you know, the, 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 the thing that I called expression is, is just a string, right? So you can loop over strings character by character, lots of different ways. So maybe the easiest is um, uh, you can ask for the length of, of a, you know, if S is a string here, so this pseudocode wouldn't exactly work. But um, if I, well, yeah, would have, if I would have declared string, it has to be a string type, then this would work. Um, so I could have initialized it to um, like that. But yeah, you'd be able to ask for the length, which would be four in this case, there's four characters, and you can get them one by one out of there, right? So just treating that string object as an array and accessing the individual. And what, what, what you get by indexing a string is a character type. So, so notice that it's, it's an actual, uh, single character, C H A R. Right? Um, so, so yeah, I mean that's that's kind of one way you can implement like your for loop here. So, if, if that character um, is an open print, you want to push it onto a stack that you use. And if it's a closed print, um, then um, you can tell. I mean, basically, if it's a closed print, you want to pop off. This will allow you to match up balance parentheses, right? So for example, the expression that is simply um, um, like this with an open and then a balance closed would end up, the, the, the for the first character, the first time through the for loop would push the opening on there. And then for the second time through the, the for loop, um, um, since the stack isn't empty, it would um, pop that off. And then the stack would be empty at that point, right? Um, so, but then there's two ways to find an answer. So for one is like this, if you get to this point where you have a closed parentheses, uh, where you wanna try to pop something off, but if the stack is empty, um, then, um, then that is an indication that it was not balanced. So here's the simplest case of that, right? So if I come in here, the first character is a closed parentheses, um, you know, we wouldn't push it, we, we would be checking here, but we would find that the stack is empty because we have, we never, that was the first and only character. So we never pushed the thing out of the stack, right? So whenever you find a, a, um, a closed parentheses, but there's nothing left to pop off, that means there was nothing to balance it with, um, right? So if you ever, if you ever get that, you, you can, you immediately can return false. You know, the answer is false. It's not now, that's right. Uh, and then uh, I should probably fix this here, but but I, I kind of failed something. A after the end of the for loop, uh, you actually do have to do one more thing. I'm sure I, I must have talked about it here, but maybe not. But basically, at the end of the for loop, either the stack is empty or not, right? If the stack is empty, that means that everything that got pushed on got correctly popped off for all the characters in the original expression, so it, so, it's, so it was balanced, right? So, so if you get done with this loop, you've processed all the characters in the string, the stack is empty, then the, the thing was balanced. Uh, if it's not empty, that means that you had a situation, you know, uh, like that. Um, I've got, uh, 
and, or, you know, even simpler like that. You know, I pushed one on there. There was no more characters. I, I never found something, a closing one to pop and balance that off. Thus, when I'm done with the for loop, uh, the stack is not empty. So I should return false um, as the answer there. So. All right. Um, and then one final thing on this. So um, uh, I talk about it in there, I believe, but you can use any concrete cloud. You, you need a local stack uh, here to use to do the pushing and the popping um, and the checking whether it is empty or not. So you could use your L stack that you, that you just created or your A stack. Something like that, all right? So, um, um, oh, um, and in this case, right, this is a template class. So, um, you know, I, I guess this is kind of a hint, but um, since we're, if you're doing the loop like I'm showing here, we're going to be uh, getting characters out. So we can like push and pop single characters. So, so that's kind of easy. I mean, there's other ways you could do this. Uh, but that's kind of an easy thing to do. Um, so, so we could have an L stack or an A stack of characters, right? Once you have that, then you can you can call all of the the, the normal stack functionality defined in the API, right? So, in particular, you should be able to push characters onto it, pop it off, check if the stack is empty or not, um, and so on. Right. So that's what you'll be doing. Oops, that's what you'll be doing um, um, in here. All right, clear enough on that one. That was the that was the task two. Um, and then I'm gonna go a little bit quicker to the other. So once you get through task two, the three, four, and five will be similar. Uh, I do wanna talk a little bit about four and five. Um, it's, it's a little bit more um, complex. So, so task four, uh, sorry, task three um, is to implement this decode I, um, ID sequence. It's kind of like a little puzzle or a game. So basically uh, as inputs, there's gonna be a sequence of characters again uh, that have I's and D's, all right? Uh, and again, let me, let me look at the tests. Um, so for this little puzzle, basically every time you pass in an expression, a string, you're gonna get a string as a result. So notice we're, we're passing in a string, we get a string as a result. Um, the result you get will always be one character larger than the string that you pass in, right? So if I have if a single character's input, I'm going to have the two characters ret um, returned as the result, decoding this, right? And basically, this, the, the I or the D tells you whether I need to increase or decrease for the next thing here. So if I have two I's, I, I increase twice, one to two, two to three, right? Uh, and the way this gets complex is when you have um, um, uh, interleavings of, of increases and, and decreases. Okay, so so if I if I simply decrease once, I have to start at two and go down to one, right? Um, and um, um, it's um, relatively easy to to do this if you use a stack. So you know if you have time, think about how how would you do this um, if you didn't have stacks? If you tried to make some sort of a loop or something, or maybe recursion, right? Uh, actually, recur. You could do this as a recursive kind of thing because recursion implicitly uses a stack. That would be another approach. But um, anyway, so so for example, uh, these these are where it might be where you can begin to understand what you need to do. So if I have an increase followed by a decrease, the first uh, two in the sequence has to increase. But then you know, and and if I have two characters, the the digits have to be one, two, three. Um, so I have to use the digits one, two, three, but I, the, the first two need to increase. So I have to go one to three and then to, to, to solve the constraint, then I have to de decrease. So I go three to two, right? Likewise, if I decrease first followed by increase, I have to start at two, go down to one and go to, there's only really one answer for any of these. Uh, unfortunately, um, 
if you have more than like 10 characters, uh, it can be a little bit tough to decode this because some of these represent like 10, 11, 16, 15, 14, but that's what's going on here. Um, so, so sometimes, um, so what I said isn't strictly true because uh, if I have like 20 characters here, you'll end up with a larger than 20. Uh, if you have less than nine characters, like, like nine characters, you should have 10 digits, zero, uh, or sorry, I guess eight, you should have nine digits, um, one through nine. If you have more than like eight, um, um, you'll get the bigger strings, but, but that's what's happening here. Um, so this is kind of a suggested algorithm. So again, you'll need a local stack. Uh, you might use a stack of characters again, um, or you could use like a stack of events. It'll work both ways here. So, you know, for each, uh, if you follow the, the suggested algorithm here, um, you need to push on the values onto your local stack, like one, two, three, four, five, right? So initially, um, uh, if you're iterating through these characters again, uh, you'll start at index zero. So what's being suggested here is that, you know, when index is zero, you take zero plus one and push that onto your stack. So you can either have a stack of integers and push one onto your stack of integers, but then when you pop it off, you're gonna have to convert that integer to a character. Uh, in order to add it to, to, you have to create a string to be returned here. Um, so you could uh, append um, that that uh, integer um, that you convert to a character on the string, or you could convert it to a character here and use a stack of characters. And then when you pop it off, it makes it a little bit easier to create your string because you can just like uh, append characters to ends of C++ strings uh, relatively easy. Hopefully, hopefully that's making kind of sense. So, um, um, I mean, just as an example, if I have a C++ string, if I have an actual character value, I believe it works to like the the plus operator works to overload to append um, uh, characters onto the ends of strings, right? But um, um, uh, integers uh, don't work like that. Um, um, it does. So you have to first tell it how to. You have to first convert that into like a string or a character. Um, So I believe that you can use like a two character or what's it called? Um, or maybe two string. Probably the uh, the easiest is um, um, using a two-string method, or you could use a, a output one of those output stream operators. That's, that's what's shown here. But um, I'm just drawing a blank. I know that there's also there is in the C plus plus standard library. It's just two string. It's two underscore string, I think. So that's, yeah, that'll probably work too to take an integer and convert it into a string that you can append on the end if you want to do it that way. So. Uh, either way, so um, hopefully I'm not losing it. So, so, you know, you, you do have to, re you do have to, um, basically end up uh, creating a result string that you're going to return back from there. So again, kind of using this 
a pseudocode, um, like, like, yeah, I mean, you know, you could start with like a, a string that's empty, your result sequence, um, and then as you're popping things off, however you're, pop, however you're keeping them in your stack, as you're popping them off, you're going to be appending them to the end of your result sequence, um, um, so that you can return that new string, right? And that result sequence, you know, given an input sequence like this, your result sequence is something like that, a, a sequence of um, um, numbers, uh, number numerical values. Um, all right. Uh, questions about that one? So um, let's talk about the, the last two kind of together. So basically the last two go together. We're going to be um, actually implementing another way of sorting using a stack here. Uh, uh, the, so task five sort stack is going to reuse the insert item on sorted stack that you implement in task four. Um, now this one though, um, so let's look at task four here. I'm gonna re-comment my task three because I never I never put in the uh, prototype or the signature that function, but I, I think I might show you guys this one. So um, here, um, the insert item on sorted stack is gonna be a void function. So it doesn't return a result. Um, and uh, notice you're act we're actually passing in um, a stack as one of the parameters. So we're, we're passing in the value to insert on the or sorted stack first, and then the a stack is the second parameter here, right? Uh, now, the value that you pass in is going to depend on the type of the stack, right? So you actually, we actually have to templatize this insert item on sorted stack function uh, in order to uh, do things like this, because, you know, if we want to uh, have stacks of integers, we need to be able to pass in um, L stack or stacks of ints. Um, And if we want to use the same function, but like uh, have stacks of strings, uh, we want to, uh, you know, again, we need to templatize this function, right? So um, I think I kind of gave that to you or discussed it at least. Um, Well, um, I'll show it to you. So basically, like when we talked about um, template classes or template member functions of classes, you, you can uh, templatize regular functions as well, which is what we're going to be doing here. So you basically have to put that template boilerplate just above the uh, declaration of the function um, and, and above the implementation. So um, so insert item on insert stack is a void function. Um, uh, that takes um, some t as input. So if 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 we're having stacks of strings, we're going to be passing in strings. Um, and it takes a stack of some t's um, uh, as a second parameter, right? Something like that. I think that should work. I'm not certain if the intelligence, <laughs> um, <coughs> as long as we also templatize the function,
like that, right? So we need that little uh, template boilerplate on here. So, so basically we're defining, uh, in this case, a regular function instead of a member function that's templatized on class T. We're expecting some T's as the first parameter and, and some stack of T's as the second parameter coming as input element. Um, so that should, Since this is a void function, I can show um, kind of stubbing it out. It's got a great title. Um, so in this case, the, the basic task on this one is that uh, Given a stack that is already sorted, uh, insert the new indicated value into the stack in the correct position to keep the stack in sorted order, all right? So the first parameter is the value to be inserted into the inserted stack. Um, and the second value is the stack of type T's already sorted that we want to insert a new value into. All right, a couple of things about this. Um, so notice for one thing, we don't want to pass this in as a constant. Um, 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 although we should pass this in as a reference parameter though. So that is important um, because if we pass it in by value, it'll make a copy of the stack. And then if we uh, manipulate and insert things on that stack, um, um, uh, it'll only be working on the copy. You know, that's the basic difference between the, the value um, and the reference parameters that we talked about. But we don't want to pass it in by constant because we do want to actually manipulate that stack, you know, i.e. insert this value into it. Um, so, Make certain that uh, the signature um, and the implementation agree on both places. Um, all right, so that should. Uh, oh, and then another thing, there was a note on there, but um, to get the um, test to pass, you will uh, you will need to uncomment these lines here um, for the insert item sort of stack, and then once you get the the task five sort stack um, declare you'll have to uncomment those but we haven't got to that point yet so um yeah I might have to take back. From these declarations, I, th I think again you have to be really careful about exactly matching these. So, probably since I didn't declare these as constant reference here, um, is why it can't match that. So, yeah, instead of having you guys change that, let's let me back off this. Uh, let's let's just pass in um, um, the value there. So we'll pass it in by value instead of by reference. Yeah, so that's, that's probably right. That's probably what uncoming these is expecting, that they're just being passed in, not as constant reference parameter, but as regular value parameter. So, all right, uh, let's see if that compiles. Um, so, uh, da, 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 da. so 
So I thought I'd uncomment the, what, what should I do there? So the do print of these maps is not compiling now. Um, 29. I don't know. I, I guess I took that out. I didn't mean to take that out. Um, I just removed the uh, the function prototype by accident, I think. Try again. All right, there. That's better. So anyway, I mean, all I was trying to do, I just wanted to make certain that nobody gets kind of stuck on uh, the signature of this. Uh, so yeah, to get that stuff to compile, use that as the signature. So um, make it into a template class. Um, I think I, I don't know if I finished my thought on this. A uh, couple of things about this. It is it is important that you pass this in by reference. I was talking about that. It is also important that you pass this in as a stack, not an L stack or an A stack, right? So now so here we're using some object oriented properties. So so uh, L uh, stacks are abstract base classes, but since all since L stacks and A stacks are are child you know, they, they, they're they child classes of the, the stack base class. L stacks and A stacks are stacks. So, um, you know, the way object-oriented inheritance works in an object-oriented language like this is, you know, I can I can declare I'm going to pass in some base class and, and any child class is an instance of that base class. So I can pass in A stacks and L stacks. Um, and, you know, we use that because, for example, sometimes we use L stacks in our tests, uh, so linked list based stacks that we pass in, uh, and then other times we use uh, array based stacks, just just to make certain that this function can take um, uh, stacks, uh, whether they're L stacks or A stack concrete implementation. Right. Um, So yeah, anyway, I mean, that's why that should be a stack, not an L stack or an A stack. Um, and then uh, this is kind of crafty compiler stuff. Again, you don't really have to worry about it, but um, uh, but yeah, you do need to uncomment those or else um, you'll get an error about um, uh, one that'll be kind of mysterious, like a link compilation, a, a link error actually, I believe. Um, so it'll seem to compile, but when it tries to link, I'm just going to say that uh, it doesn't have any concrete instances of uh, undefined references to those things. So this kind of just gives a hint to the compiler that, uh, yeah, I, I need you to give me to expand that template macro because I'm going to actually be using uh, um, insert items with stacks of ints and insert items or stacks with stacks of strings so all right uh so anyway just to wrap up um um if you get the signature correct on that um yeah well i mean okay the this actually is, is uh, a little bit more complex so this is just kind of the pseudocode of what you'll want to do uh in order to do the insert item of stack so you're going to need uh another temporary stack so the basic idea is um you're going to have two loops so so while the so you're trying to insert the value in the correct position on the input stack so while the top of the bot top of the stack is bigger, I'm, I'm going to pop them off of the input stack, the stack you're given as a parameter, and push them, um, uh, push that item onto a temporary stack. So you will have to create a temporary stack. This this will have to be a concrete local stack. Uh, so you have to declare an A stack or an L stack. But um, it is. Um, Uh, we are in a templatized function now, so um, uh, 
well, something like that, just to, yeah, just, just to be kind of concrete, right? So uh, the, the, the type T is templatized. So, so we want, an, uh, you know, we have to have a concrete stack, an L stack or an A stack, uh, but of whatever type T it is that um, we're trying to implement our insert item of sort of stack um, uh, into. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so you have a loop, you're popping stuff off of the input stack uh, and pushing them to the temporary stack until you get to the location where the top item, uh, where, where the value needs to be inserted, basically, right? Um, so as soon as you find a value uh, less than or equal to the value you want to insert, that's the place that you want to push that new value or that new item onto the input stack. And then uh, we want to uh, <coughs> use another loop. You know, since since the stack is in, is the, uh, uh, last in, first out, or the first in, last out, Philo. Uh, the last thing that I just pushed in, if I pop it off that temporary stack, uh, will come out first, right? Anyway, so if you pop everything off the temporary stack and push it back onto the original stack, we'll get them back in the correct order so that everything is sorted, but we've inserted that value uh, into its correct location in the stack. Um, All right, so that's the basic approach to that. And then um, sort stack, uh, we're going to sort, sort stack um, um, is going to reuse the insert item on um, sorted stack um, in this way here. So uh, as the name implies, if I can go back to my tests, We'll look at them. I want the, the signature for this sort stack will be similar. Um, you know, it's so sort stack will need to be a templatized function. Um, so if you look at calling sort stack, uh, that's an empty stack. Um, Um, okay, so here, I mean, here's kind of a more general case. So we, we push the items onto uh, a stack of integers here. Uh, and here's an example of calling it, right? So it just takes a single parameter. Um, sort, sort stack should be templatized. Um, so, you know, it could be a stack of integers, stack of uh, flows. It could be an L stack or an A stack or a stack of strings we use later on. But yeah, so the order that they're on the stack from um, top to bottom is the, the, the last thing that we push on will end up at the top. So the order would be 11 to the top, 8, 6, 15, 1. And then after you call sort stack, uh, you should end up with the um, um, largest value um, on, on the top of the stack. Um, I guess we're reusing, so there's some other stuff on there. Um, But, but yeah, anyway, so um, um, you get like that. So, so after you call sort stack, um, your, your stack will be um, um, sorted uh, from the largest value at the top of the stack down to the smallest value at the bottom. Right. So um, um, uh, you're required to use recursion on this. If you, if you do this as a recursive implementation, it actually ends up being a, a fairly small function to implement the sort stack, assuming your insert item on sort stack is working correctly. So the base case is that if the stack is empty, um, um, actually, if the stack is empty or size one, uh, could both be base cases, right? So <coughs> we've, we've used that kind of as a base case before for sorting. So we consider empty or stacks of size one to be sorted by definition. There's only one item. Uh, otherwise, we want to pop the top item off the stack, call sort stack now um, on that uh, on the stack that's now one smaller in size, right? Uh, recursively. So, so we call sort stack recursively. So you know, if I've got five items, I take that, that are unsorted. I take, take the top item off. Uh, now I've only got four items left on my stack. I pop the top item off. Um, and I, I call sort stack. So after returning from calling sort stack, those four items should end up being sorted. 
then I can uh, call insert item on the now sorted stack of four items to uh, put that item that I um, popped off into the correct location um, in that now sorted stack, if that makes sense. Um, All right. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, that's everything that I kind of wanted to talk about here. So I'll give kind of a uh, last chance here if anybody that's uh, here live wants me to clarify or talk about anything. No, I think I got it for the most part. Okay. All right, good enough. Um, so, yep, so let me go ahead and end the session. Um, I'll post this video. It looks like people, even though I've only getting one or two kind of watching it live, I'm, I'm getting lots of views. So hopefully everybody is seeing this and they're being useful um, uh, for people to work on these assignments. So, all right, so I'll, I'll post this. Uh, keep sending me emails as you're working on the assignment. Um, and I'll see you guys later then. All right, thank you.